Okay, so visualization. So what is visualization? So as I told you, it is a buzzword. Uh, so when we go back, uh, say four or five years back, uh, when when we don't have like self-service BI tools, like in-memory tools of uh, ClickView, and uh, so they were evolving at that time. So that time we used to use uh, um, the IBM flavor like Cognos um, BI tool, and also OBIE, the Oracle flavor, and uh, BO, now it is acquired by SAP. So all these are the BI tools. So there also they have improved a lot to uh, touch upon the visualization. As visualization is like uh, nowadays it is a buzzword. Why it has become a buzzword? Because the buzzword of analytics came into picture in IT scenario. Everywhere there is an analytics comes into mind. So the BI earlier we used to uh, create reports or dashboards on a canned reports like transactional reports see uh, what is my uh, sales for this today what is my revenue earning what is my uh, so these are the transactional reports the canned reports the report will be there schedule it scan it and send the information they used to merely handle the information not much of the knowledge so now later on when the analytics came into picture a lot of business uh, intricacies go into uh, study the data what is what is I am having a lot of data in my organization I need to use to make some decision so that started into picture so when when you make a decision out of data so it is not very easy for a human brain to analyze out of the numbers or a text data you cannot make a decision on that so uh, to represent them in a picture as uh, uh, say a picture uh, tells uh, 100 stories so uh, representing in an image picture mm, image picture means everywhere uh, be it a chart be it a pie chart be it uh, so all this uh, came into picture okay mm, uh, yeah yeah uh, I can understand your excitement like difference between report and visualization and difference between traditional and new BI okay exactly Ajay uh, okay uh, so I'm going to cover on that okay so visualization basically um, putting much of the um, dashboard and reports rather than giving them only the tables list of tables like uh, see this is my months this is my revenue in in terms of dollar so that is not the only um, table that we can show it in a dashboard rather than we can show it in histogram we can show it in a line chart we can show it in pie chart we can show it in a some figurative manner so what percentage of my sales out of my 30 days for today so there is a chunk of pie comes there and you can easily understand then if the user wants to go in detail what is that chunk means what is the today's percentage out of my 30 days for month end revenue so he can check it out so that is the thing that visualization came into picture so uh, nowadays we give much importance on the visualization it is visualization is not only uh, giving the uh, pictures and images on the dashboard it is also giving uh, like flashy pictures okay uh, nice to look and uh, uh, there will be jaji kind of uh, things because now the web technology is helping us in that respect okay uh, so I think you can see uh, be it a television channel or be it a newspaper be it a um, any media you take it jersey pictures flashy pictures they come and there they will be attracting quickly the user or the reader uh, to understand what is my thing say whenever the financial statement of a, an organization is published and uh, nobody used to see the first the data what is my thing so they see the uh, histogram right the bar chart the line chart what is my uh, year on year uh, growth what is my uh, loss what is my profit what is my income tax all that so they are all in pictures so that is where we use in news we use in sports we use in entertainment and when it comes to social network okay it is a huge huge thing nowadays a lot of analytics happens on social net network so when you want to give an analytics visualization on social network you because every click we don't know how much seconds it takes for a uh, one second how much clicks will happen on the website 
right? So every organization has their own website, be it a Facebook, be it a tweet. So uh, the, mm, uh, the click stream, we call it as the streamed data. So that's why we call it as streaming the data. It is not only data because data is not here uh, constant, right? It is flowing. So when we allow the streaming of data come into our data sources in our data warehouse, then our uh, visualization tools like Click V1 Tableau has to picture them and has to give them. See, if one day if I take an organization which is a multinational company, how much is my clicks on one product um, uh, likes? So how, how big it is to represent? So that all volumetric visualization that we need to put it a right picture and give them. So that is the uh, visualization technique we need to adopt and population report like demographic. Yeah, so how we represent uh, across the nation, uh, what is my state uh, percentage or what is my um, city percentage across the states and across the world, what is my percentage. So all these uh, things, how we see the views, so how we create it, so that all uh, the features of a visualization. And also one more important point why I call the buzzword visualization is important nowadays is because analytics, when we say analytics, uh, there are a lot of dimensions came into picture. Uh, so I think you might be knowing in data warehouse, we say measures and dimensions, right? So there will be uh, in a table, there will be dimensional modeling. There will be facts will be there. Facts will be like my revenue is my fact. That is one uh, one uh, um, key attribute, right? So that is the thing. And sales, sales for that month is month is my one dimension. We call the textual attributes as dimension and the uh, facts as my uh, metrics, okay? So on this, we used to develop the KPIs, key performance indicators. Means uh, it is not only representing the sales revenue across months, it gives some KPI, right, to the decision making for that organization. So that is the performance indicator. When we say all these dimensions, so uh, users wants to see across all my categories, I want to see my revenue. Across all my products, I want to see my revenue. Across all my region, I want to see. The question means that uh, to make the decision by the business analyst or a C-level uh, manager, so it needs a lot of uh, dimensions they will be giving us to the BI team. So I, I need to analyze on all these five dimensions the same revenue. So uh, picturizing that on a same chart will be a much troublesome. So then the visualization technique helps us. Then what we do, uh, so we try to represent the dimensions then on the analytics part so when we go to deeper into like statistical techniques uh, uh, like uh, mm, we do a few mean mode uh, financial uh, results frequency intervals and uh, we use the bell curve all these statistical techniques we use why we use in order to reduce the dimensions means reduce the dimensions. See, we will have to knock off uh, this dimension against this metric is not having value in your data. So I will kill this and I will give you this data. So this is what um, uh, the analytics uh, uh, poses some of the um, solutions to make our visualization. So um, keeping in view the analytics, if my BI report is uh, giving the solution of an analytics, then I have to give some visualization because analytics also happens uh, back, back, okay, back end there will be statistical calculation, but representing them in a chart is again visualization. That's why we call it as visualization. Nowadays, in most of the um, IT organization, as I have seen in even multinational companies, they are coming with, earlier they used to have a business intelligence practices, means uh, a center of excellences. Now they are coming with only visualization. So they are going, okay. So these are the visualization means the self-service BI. Self-service BI, I will answer your query, Ajay. Uh, self-service BI, basically what happens, uh, the users who uh, are not tuned to uh, more on the IT uh, technical part, who are not, they are only business users. They don't know what is SQL query, they don't know what is underneath data, but they know uh, what the dimensions and what the facts. So in, in ClickView kind of self-service BI tools, there will be a lot of drag and drop features will be available. So it is at most uh, responsibility to design by a solution architect to give all these uh, dimensions and facts which is required by the business analyst on the drag and drop mode. 
then the business on a user when we give the click view dashboard to him so it is not only pre decided uh, pre designed dashboard the bi it team will do but the business user can uh, do his own analysis by dragging and dropping various uh, dimensions across measures so he can invent on his own oh this is my data i didn't know this he, he might have not given the input to a it team to give this dashboard but when he when we give this uh, drag and drop features on the click view he goes there he plays actually on the report he's playing means basically uh, he uh, dices it is called like a cube when we dice a cube different different dimensions different faces of the cube will be seen no so like that he dices and he slices so slice and dice is a bit correct word in visualization so that uh, the self service bi uh, he can easily he or she can easily do on on the click view dashboard uh, screen interface and that will be a self service bi so it will be very easy uh, but rather than in a traditional bi like earlier uh, adopted like rap uh, the um, IBM flavor as I told you Oracle flavor so they might not be having earlier but now they are also getting matured by plugging in latest technology and they are also coming up with self service BI okay I can uh, I think this answers uh, the new things anyway when we go into deeper things and I will give you some examples I will show you I can this we'll move on to the um, understand what is click view Okay, I think I have answered uh, what is the report and what is visualization. Visualization gives us most of the images, pictures, and charts, and uh, having much complicated dimensions to be answered, though it is an analytics solution or a, a normal dashboard. But whereas a report, we call it as a report, a, maybe a canned report, maybe a just a giving a transactional report. Okay, what is my... Mm, uh, uh, sales and what is my uh, products uh, stock on the retail domain in my stores different stores what is the footprint of the customers visiting my uh, stores so those are the transactional systems that we show in a simple report okay okay move on to what is click view click view is one of the flexible business intelligence why we call it as flexible uh, platform means it has an etl scripting also um, uh, data into meaning it means uh, as i told you it is a numerical and text data can be put into a meaning when i put it in a, a, like a, a, a revenue figures um, the numbers and text in a, a line chart so that gives us some meaning whether the line is uh, trending up or whether it is uh, trending down so these are the meanings that we attach to the visualization graphs so that's why we call it as data into meaning basically uh, now there are a lot of buzzwords you can, if you can see uh, in the uh, self service bi um, knowledge uh, they call it as data romancing so um, i i can use these words because uh, it's an european context uh, the data can be handled in such a thing so we need to get some decisions out of it okay uh, sandeep has a question is it bi tool or visualization tool okay uh, see uh, it is uh, mm, uh, hard to identify it is a bi tool but bi is an um, umbrella so wherein all these uh, business intelligence uh, tools can come under bi bi is a big umbrella whereas uh, visualization and self service we made it uh, to these some of the uh, very handy and uh, very quick uh, um, tools like in memory tools uh, like click view tableau and sizens there are a lot of tools are there so they are coming up now because of the maturity of technology so uh, by back end technology is coming up so they are all under visualization tools so we can say self service bi or visualization tool also but bi we can say it is a major like an umbrella okay uh, best part of click view okay uh, the click view is having an associative okay this is very patent to click view only it is not available in any other self service bi associative means uh, when when uh, uh, when you put the data 
in a, in a tables say like there are about four uh, uh, dimensions and say like month region and so i am giving some examples of the sales retail thing because uh, i am into more so that you can very well catch it okay so uh, those are the four dimensions and one metric is my revenue so these are associated with four dimensions the revenue is associated with four dimension so when you bring this data all these uh, five tables into clickview on the dashboard means on the interface screen um, on the canvas so there will be like associative when you click on some name so uh, it goes with the same name search and wherever that name appears in any of the field it goes and catches and it gives an association between that name so user can easily identify this the feature is very important okay uh, what are basic difference between spotfire tableau and clickview technically Okay, mm, I think I will handle it a little later, Ajay. Okay, uh, the co the continuation okay goes there. Um, okay, associative. Associative basically the it gives. See, you know, in a database uh, we have like keys, right? So when we say key, um, uh, we we search with the ID uh, to uh, where all this ID is having link with other tables. So like that, we establish the relationship in database terms. But in associative, where all the name, same name, okay, uh, uh, say some store name is there in a retail uh, data, that store name, if you click, uh, click on, on the dashboard, where all this store name is associated with other data, means other four dimensions, be it five dimensions, and other revenue. So where all I can bring in this store, and I can drag and drop in my chart, and get my data associated. So that is the association. Okay. Uh, anyway, in our uh, assignments, we will uh, deal with more, and then you will be able to understand rather than on theory. Okay. And then in memory, okay, in memory stores the data in the server RAM, very high compressible format. So when I say ClickView can be used as an ETL also, right? Okay, when I say uh, ClickView has a in memory, uh, it stores the data. And I, when I said it has an ETL uh, capacity also, means you can write ETL scripts, extraction, transformation, and loading. So when you write this, so you can connect directly to a huge data, to any data source, be it a database, be it a ERP. When I say ERP, your SAP and other other lot of ERPs will come there. Don't get confused with the clarification, okay? So, and then file, big, huge files, say like 1 GB, 3 GB, every day updating the data. So, those things also we can um, input inside my click view. But when we bring in those huge data, so where we want to keep, I don't have any um, database here to load the data uh, inside my click view. So where you want to keep it? So you want to keep it in a memory because memory is very important. So when you want to keep it in a memory, the RAM, memory memory is a RAM, not a secondary uh, memory, okay? When I say RAM, it is the server's RAM. When, I, when all the data which is uh, represented in a dashboard, which is required to represent a uh, uh, dashboard, that data will be stored in RAM. So when I make a specific query, that will be stored in the RAM, and it keeps on uh, coming uh, in that uh, in a in a slice and dice manner. When there is a div all altogether a different query is run, then it goes and fetches from the file, and again it keeps in the RAM. So this is the kind of why uh, it is keeping in RAM is one is it is highly compressed you know, because uh, as uh, as I say, uh, 10 to 100 percent, right? So a uh, hundred percent data can be uh, put it in uh, compressed as ten percent, and we can keep it in RAM because nowadays, of course, RAM uh, cost is also coming down. Uh, so uh, we have worked uh, recently in a project with nine twelve GB RAM. All that now RAMs are coming huge, huge infrastructure they are giving us for servers. There is no okay. Uh, Ajay has a question: Four GB RAM of a system is sufficient for client installed in computer? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a problem. 4GB is uh, recommended for a personal uh, developer thing. And uh, oh, uh, here, mm, uh, um, new learner, uh, Sangeeta. Okay. Uh, hi, um, Sangeeta. 
I think uh, now you have joined uh, later. Okay, so we are going through this click view. I was facing problem in joining. Could you please recap? Okay, <laughs> in the interest of other learners, what you do, Sangeeta, uh, there is a, a learning material available. Yeah, I think in the logical break, I think in an about uh, another 15-20 minutes, I'll give you, uh, in the logical break, I'll give you what is LMS in the interest of others' uh, time. Uh, so you will come to know there is a pre-recorded uh, videos available. You can very well take that videos and you can uh, very well watch them and you can come in an assignment and I will create with you. It's not a problem. Is that okay for you, Sangeeta? Okay, uh, so uh, so far we have not even uh, go into click view components. We are just dealing with what is visualization. Okay, just a recap. Okay, what is visualization? And uh, this classroom is having eight sessions. Okay, and what is click view? What is self service BI? What is BI tool? And what is click view? Okay, some components we are going in detail. Uh, uh, sorry for that. I will accommodate you uh, during uh, in the logical breaks. Okay, uh, okay, fast to deploy. So when I say uh, fast to deploy, uh, due to associations availability, negligible maintenance need, um, so deployment is refinement. So uh, uh, when I say the BI tool, traditional BI, right? So there we used to design like months together some projects BI tool months together like four or five months we used to design the DB we used to design the model we used to uh, take the assistance of RDBMS and publish the dashboards in uh, traditional BI tools but here uh, because ETL script is already there and we are not using any of the third-party uh, database here in the click view to represent my data or dashboard so it will be very easy to uh, deploy it uh, and very fast what do you mean by maintenance? Okay, uh, negligible maintenance means, uh, see, uh, on the dashboard, say uh, tomorrow you deployed the dashboard, mm, uh, it suffices to the uh, business requirement of the business user. Business user started using it, and after some point of time, uh, they find that uh, there is one more category to be uh, brought in there right from the data source. Uh, can you bring that and can you make a change? So there is a maintenance, right? Uh, so that changes can happen very easily. And uh, because it is everything is available on the click view component, go to the data source, get that, and bring it here. And there won't be any much impact study that you need to do that. And maintenance from the point of server, configuration, administration, like creating the users, all those things will be very easy because there will be monitors available on the admin side and configuration, which is OK out of this uh, thing. Efficient. Efficient provides to create custom chart using the JavaScript API. So uh, th those who are uh, very um, um, savvy in JavaScript writing, so those APIs uh, can be uh, built in inside to make some custom charts which they want to do, which is not available as a ready in ClickView, so they can do it. Okay, there is a question from Kathy. Do we cover creating custom charts using JavaScript API or D3 uh, in this course? Uh, okay, um, uh, may not be D3, but uh, JavaScript API, uh, uh, the dashboards will be there. So uh, we will see the examples, I think. We may not create it, okay? Uh, but D3, what you said, D3 is actually used in ClickSense, uh, Kathy. Uh, it is that that technology is there in uh, ClickSense, but there also I think very few uh, access to uh, do your own custom program and bring it there. But most of the uh, D3 features are available there. I think you can readily usable there. You no need to go uh, nitty gritty of uh, writing D3 programs there. Okay, uh, so that is available in uh, uh, basically at the front end uh, thing of uh, ClickSense. Okay. Then uh, I think that answers the question. Uh, even HTML5 also, Kathy, HTML5 is also used in ClickSense, that later part to report, making like latest uh, web savvy pictures, web savvy images, uh, those kind of things that we can see in ClickSense, as I told you. Okay, But the back end looks uh, similar to the um, ClickView itself, the bringing in from ETL and other things. 
okay uh, okay um, go on to uh, loading qvx is the best answer for loading source data from anywhere see this uh, qvx is in click exchange format we will see how the click exchange format will be there and as an example i will show you in the later part of this okay moving on to the components of basic components of a click view click view has three main infrastructure components one is uh, click view developer mm, as i told you uh, click view developer uh, mm, or a designer this is uh, from the point of uh, how we use the click view component okay it is not from the point of a um, resource uh, like a human resource we call it as a developer okay used by designers and developers so that's why they write designers and developers to create okay i think it answers the earlier question of ajay okay data extraction and transformation model so as I told you, data extraction and transformation model, we used to write a script. So that all can be done by a click view developer. Uh, and then graphical user, that is a GUI, presentation layer. So usually um, uh, the engagement module of uh, the project uh, for click view will be done by one is uh, developing the graphical user interface and developing the data extraction layer separately and then they will club it together for the ease of uh, delivery method and then they will give it so that is called as click view developer okay click view server this is all click view developer will be done by a developers desktop uh, be it a laptop or be it a um, uh, network system so that will be their developer when they develop all this and they will assign it to uh, server so server will be handling uh, to make an association with uh, their developed programs and uh, the server will manage the other part like handle all requests between clients so clients are the developers click with applications like access request a report authorization and authentication in server what we do we have our authentication file be it in windows nt or other files of the organization they have some users of this business category so those authentication that we can keep it and we can associate those reports can be accessible by this group all that we can do it by click view server and then click view publisher what it does is loads data from multiple data sources like OLEDB, ODBC, XML, XLS, XLS is again Microsoft XLS, XML again from web thing, OLEDB again connecting to RDBMS that is relational database management. Uh, the OLEDB is much faster rather than ODBC that is object database connectivity. So these are the things how to connect that I think you can see quickly there and you can try it out uh, on the personal laptop also with your local database if you have some light edition or in your organization. It reduces the click view application and distributes to QVS. Okay, publisher what it does, it takes all the data sources connected data from the means it is the first uh, point wherein we collect the data source and then we publish the data and then a click view server handles the much of it. Do we create cover creating custom charts? Okay, mm, that is done. Okay, uh, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, we'll go further. Okay, mm, okay. As a solution architect or as a developer, it is very important to know the architecture, right? Uh, so here you will get a, a glimpse of how the click view works. Okay. Uh, see, as I told you, click view publisher here at the center. I think I am pointing my mouse here. Uh, the my mouse pointer so click view publisher is a part of click view server there inside uh, the server so when I infrastructure resource see this is my SAN storage in some organization they will be having data source in uh, uh, SAN storage and directory catalog active directory uh, means uh, this is I told you authentication uh, things uh, like a user and their uh, credentials okay uh, passwords username all that will be here uh, we can directly connect to the system of the organization uh, from the infrastructure security team or we can take the file and we can input here and then this is the data source we have here a cylinder to represent uh, any RDBMS and an Excel to represent a file uh, we even we have a CSV file we have an XML file we have a website all that we can put it here ERP files all that we can put it here and again it will be consumed by the click view publisher click view publisher will connect to all these data sources and then what it does is very important is scheduling 
it does, uh, it connects with a desktop. See, this is what I told you, designer and developer, right? Designer, developer will does the ClickView desktop uh, document. When I say document, it is click view document. I will see, I will tell you what is document in the next uh, module, okay, in, in the next uh, s sessions. Okay, click view QVW and QVD file structure. Here, the designer and the developer, they do the um, dashboards, uh, they design the ETL script and they save it here on the space on the server. Then publisher will connect to them and accordingly they schedule it. It, it schedules, it runs it because it has to take on a uh, prior order schedule the files from here, right? Uh, RDBMS, okay, my um, transaction data uh, from my organization ends by 5 uh, p.m. in the evening on daily basis on a business day. So they will give us, so uh, 5.15 or up after that we will be able to fetch the data, so we will be able to get the updated data. So all this can be scheduled by the publisher and then the QVP is a publisher, okay? This is front-end. So this is, we call it as back-end, and this is front-end. In the front-end, what we do is, ClickView server will have a uh, meta file structure, uh, means it has a metadata, uh, means metadata is a data about data, okay? So how the table is there, and what is the relationship, all that it will be keeping here, and user documents, user access documents, means QVD, uh, QVW files. And then these are the clients actually. When I publish this by the QV publisher, it will be on the HTTPS, on the intranet, or uh, um, it will be published and it will be made available on the intranet accessible with a thin client. This is very important, okay, thin client. We don't need any installation there at the users. So they can browse it on the web, all the reports and dashboards uh, within, in the intranet according to their access and user IDs, uh, their uh, dashboards, okay? Uh, be it a desktop, laptop, or a mobile remote devices. So when I say mobile, it is uh, be it an iOS or Android. So these are the things you can publish it and they can be made accessible on the things. Okay, I'll move on to the next uh, slide. So here, the components of the click view. So as I told you, data sources, uh, here all files and RDBMS will be here, and then uh, click view server, in-memory engine. As I told you, in-memory engine. So all the data, when I pushed into the server, the server's RAM will keep all the data. It is not the secondary memory. And client-server communication happens from the QVS. So these are the main um, things happens, responsibility of the ClickView server. ClickView publisher, data reload, and document distribution. Data reload, how it happens? It is by the scheduling, okay? So when I schedule it, data reload happens. If I schedule it every day, night, so it will be reload, okay? So document distribution. Document distribution means uh, we call each application, means QVW application as one document. It has maybe eight dashboards or one dashboard or uh, 20 dashboards. So uh, for a specific business category or for a specific business users. So they will be able to distribute. So we can distribute according to the uh, users and business departments of the organization. Okay, then click to management console. Uh, sorry, data stored in publisher. Uh, no, no, uh, not in publisher. Sorry, data stored in publisher. No, no, it is not in publisher. Publisher does only scheduling and uh, uh, distribution activity, okay? Data is stored in, again, in memory. That storage will be handled by QVS. But where exactly physically the data is stored, we will, we will go, we'll check it out in the next uh, Piece, okay, so do we have publisher component in uh, while set up in real time? Okay, Sandeep is asking a question. So do we have a publisher component in with setup? Okay, in our personal laptop, uh, sorry, personal desktop portion, as I told you, uh, which is coming under an, as a an, uh, free version, which is not having publisher. It comes along with bundled with a server. In an organization, it bundles with the server. Okay, when, when we install server, the publisher will be get installed. Then we connect our desktops to that. 
got it so the same even uh, the personal desktop if you create a tq uh, dashboard and uh, write a script you can connect the same qw with uh, leased license from the server because when we install a server and publisher they will be having licensed it won't be available on a free thing okay so that license we can lease it on our desktop and we can make it available the communication between server and desktop okay sandeep then uh, clickview management console part of qvs so clickview server clickview management console is uh, basically it's a console to manage uh, how the what all documents are received and uh, what all documents are read by what all uh, authentication all that we can uh, do it by the management console and clickview desktop as i told you clickview desktop we can develop and design and then web and mobile clients so I told you in intranet if you publish the report it is web and it is mobile clients on iOS and Android okay and access point part of QVS so there will be like an access point this is also on the web like section access we call it as anyway we will deal with that later a click view portal there will be a portal made available on the portal you can just go and browse whatever the dashboard you want to have see uh, this is my click view so I think uh, this is uh, uh, one of the click view document uh, click view file so I'll be able to show you there uh, see these are the tabs this is one of the uh, front end and also the back end can be designed in one it depends on the project again see the comparison charts are here okay visualization see compare a set of values how we do visualization with time dimension with the uh, uh, stacked bars and with long text dimension with stacked bars so these are the visualization how we represent the percentages margin see one uh, each uh, tab is one uh, dashboard inside dashboard we have all these objects okay this is a line chart this is line chart this is a radar chart okay so mm, this is one of the pie chart and the box uh, block chart and other charts here line chart so my code chart so these are the uh, things um, see uh, when you download the personal uh, desktop portion so uh, if you go to the folder they will be having a folder called examples so in the examples you can see how the charts are made how they uh, uh, see they are very interactive charts here this is called interaction okay see this is uh, of self-service bi when i click on this there will be sales representative so by sales representative by product subgroup what is my data by customer what is my data so by item description what is my data so all this these are the interactive charts and we can very well even do a drag and drop and uh, to get the self-service uh, bi experience okay and the currency and all that we can change it here so this is one kind of and there is the butterfly chart and sparkline chart KPIs. See, these are the visualization, the ultimate of visualization. See how I can represent uh, in a linear gauge chart, test tube. See, I have reached only 1% of the target. So I am seeing this as a test tube. I am seeing it as a speedometer. Okay. So uh, traffic light, this is one kind of showing the visualization. Text object, this is one kind, bar chart. So all this we can show it in a click view and this is the front dashboard okay and the back end so when we click on here this is the code page so where we write code page but in examples the click tech uh, has avoided giving the code here but there are some files available in the community site also community is also a very good uh, um, uh, forum in click so you, your questions all will be answered there in the community and you can find out a lot of things there okay okay we'll come on to uh, this uh, i think now uh, you are familiar with the components of the click view right <clears throat> okay once click view doc uploaded to the publisher the doc is available to any users 
okay below steps occurs when user opens the document doc means that it's a document now uh, i have opened one document right that is one click view document we call it as click view document okay highly compressed data set will be loaded off the disk into the server ram when i open the uh, document so all the data will be compressed and put it in a ram so to be made available easily by the user to access the dashboard the same data set used to be in an un aggregated state it is actually unaggregated so uh, the details will be there when you aggregate you can use it uh, in the form of a, a interaction what i did now so you can interact and you can make an aggregation you can drill down and you can drill up all the things this will act as a base data set for login user and other users who are requesting and nothing but in memory service and the service will stay in memory until no user activity has occurred so uh, the service will be uh, means service from the uh, QVS uh, will be same till you uh, hit a query, hit a fire a query from the dashboard for the next set of uh, parameters. So it will be same. It will remain same. Okay. So when you open it, you don't need to uh, say, okay, go and uh, load the data in RAM. When you open the document, the, all the data will get stored in the uh, server's RAM and start able to uh, give the data in the dashboard. Okay, once the users click any sheet object in the click view document, that indicates which subsets of data. See here, analyze data via selections. I told you, I have shown you now, sub areas. So when I say sub area by department, what is my data? And uh, where, when I click on the dashboard, uh, it is highly indexed in nature means very fast it has to retrieve the data that is very important in self-service BI you should not take uh, much time so otherwise uh, the performance will be uh, at stake okay highly indexed means they are all highly indexed by the as I told you earlier association rule at the back end so when it is in the you know all uh, how the Uh, you know all how the index works in the uh, database, right? The same kind of index works here with the association. Uh, uh, there will be, when, when we write the script, you will come to know, okay? Then uh, click view runtime presents a small area of all the data available to the click view a document based on the selection. So in the selection, I'm not interested in to see all the data. One user is not interested to see all the data, right? So I want to see by customer only, as I have sh shown you, right? So I want to see by customer. So when I want to see the by customer, so so I want to see only the part of the customer. So only that customer data will be brought in here, and it will represent there. Okay. The happens in runtime and executes the clicks. So when I do a next click for a separate uh, customer or for a product, then it goes and for that product filter, for that dimension it brings in the data. So that is what how the analyze, analyze data via selections. So it is my selection. So I'll show you here. Uh, see here. When I select the data for GBP, all that is represented as GBP, okay? Uh, so, but here, they have not shown the selections here. In some charts, I will show you how, how the selections will happen there, okay? So, uh, in the upon selection, uh, the aggregates uh, take over the run runtime when executes the clicks so uh, when the user wants to see the data at an aggregated level uh, say i don't want at the customer level i want at the all the customer level then it aggregates the data to that level and it shows it so that is done dynamically okay 
Okay, this is very important from the first part of the um, connection actually. So when we understand uh, the architecture now, we understood the architecture. So in the architecture, we understood like we have to connect uh, the data sources first, build, uh, bring in the data into the click view, then we need to build the dashboards. So what kind of uh, data sources that we connect here? So we will see here, data comes from many and multiple sources and with click view. The source data will get connected from database, spreadsheets, websites, and custom data sources. Okay, so here are the major uh, things like files, uh, databases, and direct database queries. So here, uh, the dynamic uh, uh, at the begin of the class, uh, Jay was asking like direct discovery connection. So this is where uh, the dynamic connectivity happens with the database. And uh, when you query it, it doesn't uh, run inside ClickView. It runs on the database and fetch the data. This is direct connection with the RDBMS. And whereas this with ODBC connectivity, what happens? Uh, if you fire a query, it goes to the database, it fetches all the data and bring in, brings in the um, data into the click, click view document, then it uh, sh sh displays the data into the dashboard. Okay. So then custom data sources. See, custom data sources, those who know ETL tools, okay? ETL tools is uh, like, um, say, uh, be it an Informatica, uh, be it uh, IBM data stage, what happens? Um, they will be having their own custom connectors, okay? So using that custom connectors, we can directly connect to the ETL tool and we can bring in the data from wherever uh, that ETL tool fetches the data from. Because in an enterprise uh, data warehousing, we can see uh, directly not only databases, files, the data can be fetched from the ETL tool also. ETL tool manages the data fetch and it, it throws the data to ClickView. Uh, in QEX technology, we use this QEX technology for that. It is a own data source connector. These are the connections, okay? So I will show you how the um, uh, connections happens here. Uh, see here, uh, this is one click view document. You can see here at the top dot qvw. qvw is a click view working file. Okay. So when, when I say click view working file, this is one document. This can be stored uh, for um, say like uh, um, uh, by the business, okay? So if uh, your organization has 10 business units and each business has eight dashboards, say for example, okay? So each business you can create one QVW and those eight dashboards you can keep it in one QVW file for a simplicity uh, from the point of maintenance and from the point of giving an access, scheduling, all that happens, okay? So uh, here, I have not written any dashboard here, chart here. There is a text display here. So this also can be done. And when I, because this is actually only the backend data, how the scripting happens. So I go here, you have to click here to see the backend uh, scripting, how we can write the ETL script here. Okay, this, uh, this is the script actually, what we call it as. Anyway, the details of this script we will see in the module two in the next week, okay? Uh, in the, uh, 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 tomorrow, okay? But here, I will show you what all these components here. I told you, you know, ODBC connectivity, OLEDB connectivity. So then QVS admin data provider, DLL. So we will come to know later. Okay, how we connect, then ODBC we have to do it here. And if it is a RDBMS data source, we have to click on here connect, then the uh, connect to data source. If I have a database here, it asks the database access user ID, password, uh, then uh, the uh, name of the DSN. I think you all were familiar with how to create the DSN, okay? I'll not take much time, but even if uh, you come across with any difficulty, we can take it up in the assignment in the next week class, okay? So this is how uh, the data source connection and test connection. When we test connection, so what happens? So all the ODBC data will come here and stores here, okay? 
and uh, okay ODBC read field okay see these are the tables we use. so when we when we connect to the data source it represents which data source which database and who is the owner of the database what all tables I can see if you have a permission for a set of tables in that database you, you can see all the tables and views here even the system tables here and then you can bring in those tables into you can select only few tables and you can bring in here to the click view this is all about uh, connection to the whole TBC then table files so when I say table files uh, be it a CSV be it an Excel be it an XML so you can bring in any type of Excel so with simplicity we will take it as uh, because most of the in you know, any, any organization in analytics part I think uh, the much data is uh, stored in XLS now because of the heavy handling capacity see when I click on XLS some data file data dot XLS see you can see here what is that delimited you can see of course this delimited is for uh, tab or um, and what columns you need to bring in so you can do all the selections here header size you need a header um, and uh, you need to label them or you need to keep it at the same label like country is a column name and these are the rows can you keep it like this so all the columns are here if you want you can delete the columns also I don't want this column it is there in the source I don't want date column so you can click it here and you can transform here you are doing some part of the transformation here itself okay so if it is XLSX uh, a, a new format and if it is an HTML you can bring in uh, this is QVD. QVD means so uh, it is a click view data file. When I say a compressed QVW document, I told you, you know, so that will be stored in QVD. See, uh, in an organization, if somebody uh, say uh, last year some click view uh, project is deployed and they have some QVD uh, data is stored in QVD files for their purpose, I can take that QVD file and I can input here also, and I can use it for my dashboard to build here. So that is the click view data file. So you just try to familiarize the meanings here. Q click view data file, click view working file. So those are the things, okay? This is only a data file, highly compressed. This can be read only by the uh, QVW, not by any XLS or something. Then you can bring into the XLS. Then XML also, then as I told you, QVX also, okay? So uh, here you can do next, next and all that you can do and explicit labels then finish then what happens here it comes here and loads the data see from here you can see the data is done here see uh, my table name uh, see I have inputted an XLS file naming source path in the in the source path see I have put in dollar why dollar we will see in the next class okay uh, so my file name is data dot XLSX and uh, I am calling this as a logically main data and then this is the syntax I use load okay this is actually the script I have written but in the XLS file I have the date only I have okay this is again a script apply map uh, then this is again my script how I transformation I have done uh, see parallelly in, in uh, uh, click view parallelly we can do a transformation in this forum also means uh, in the database script you, I think you might have written SQUM is one uh, um, uh, field in the field you want only left side of six letters so those things are you can just do a transformation then you can input the data uh, then and there only then gross US dollar then USD then units as it is from that this is a green syntax so this will be get loaded here very simple so when I run here reload so all that data will get reloaded and when I when I click on here reload all the data gets stored in the QVW file got it but here I have not shown you how to store it in QVD file so that we will take it later okay But in ETL, we will generally have three layers, staging, ODS, and data model. Yeah, yeah. In ETL, we generally have, okay, I think you must uh, have designed very well ETL uh, solutions. Yes, uh, here also you can make like, see, so you, you create a uh, uh, tabs here. First, you import all the uh, tables and put it in one uh, QVW um, because to handling will be very important, right? So you call them as a ODS. 
then uh, in the second layer what you do you you create a data model for them connect all the tables there okay each tab you can create one one table then connect them in all the tables then you can make a model okay that is a data model so like that you can you can do like a etl layer itself one is ods bringing in all the things and then connect it to a data model or even one more layer you can do like after transformation you can do and load it in one more uh, uh, tabular uh, uh, document then you make a table then after table you can make some aggregation also so this is a layer of architecture three layers of architecture two layers of architecture that all comes in in back end we used to usually do three layer of architecture in a in a huge uh, data set okay having got 10 to 12 business units then we do it like uh, uh, the ods then data model uh, then uh, it loads to aggregations and in between there is a transformation stage i'll show you uh, in the next classes okay can we change the data type yeah yeah you can change the data type by formatting the syntax uh, because you need to very well input it so when i am do when i am handling each uh, field so you can very well change that See, I have shown you this is uh, the script wherein we can go to table files, click view files, web files, field data. Okay, create uh, click view document, click on edit script on the toolbar menu from script editor. This is the script editor. Okay, browse and open file, file wizard will appear and follow the wizard steps. See, I inputted that Excel file, right? So that is the file wizard. Script will appear and give table name to load script. Click we will use this table name to identify the table. Excel is now data source. So if data source is getting updated, then need to refresh dashboard. See, uh, today now you loaded uh, the data XLSX file. Tomorrow again, uh, if that XLSX file is updated, what you have to do is again reload uh, here. When you reload here, the new XLX file, as long as the name and path is the same, the new XLX file will be get updated there. So then your dashboards will also uh, figure with the updated data. Got it? Okay, mm, uh, we will go in detail how the script works. As I told you, say I'm connecting to database, be it a database or a file. Uh, so if it is a database, I select the write a select query, okay? Uh, so ODBC connect, all that OLEDB connect, then select query. It automatically takes the select query when you when you write, uh, when you select a table, okay? You no need to write each and every query. So it automatically generates that once we you want to make any manipulation, like I want only uh, these fields, uh, then you can curtail those fields in a select query, okay? Otherwise, you can input all the, so it tries for you. That is the script. So when you write a script, then files will be getting loaded with a reload button, okay? Files will be there. Then when you execute it, uh, so that is the QVW. Suppose new column added to the file, okay? Uh, when you when you uh, when you add a new file new column to the file as long as file name is same so when you reload it so you can very well bring that uh, uh, once again your metadata you need to update it once again that column name will appear there okay so that you have to do it then reload it so it will consume it so it is not automatically done it okay but you have to reload it the metadata will get updated then uh, qvw is here uh, so I told you QVW is a working file. I have shown you I can write script and I can uh, create a dashboard in the QVW file. So this is QVW file. But why this QVD? Okay, so QVD is a click view data file. When I load it here in the QVW file, if it is a huge file, the best designer, but the solution architect will not put all the files inside the QVW. He will use uh, to write them on the QVD file. So I'll show you one QVD file here like this. See, it cannot be readable. It's a binary file and highly compressed. So if I want to uh, open this file, I have to use a QVW file, go here, 
and go to uh, table files okay and I have to come here data QVD okay open it see now I can see the data fantastic isn't it see now it is automatically it has referred to QVD I have not written here because it is ex the extension of the file is QVD so it has automatically so I told you so you have QVD files already built in in your organization by someone or in your organization for this project if you if you want to store huge data you can store it in QVD in the next QVW file you can import them you got it so then by this what feature you are uh, eliminating is from the BI solution uh, point of view you are not depending on the database or on the external file source you use the, you use the script you imported all the data from the database and for that day or for that uh, uh, period you will be storing it in QVD file inside your server okay so uh, your your database is now disconnected you no need to depend on the database because performance is a uh, great thing okay um, so that's why QVD you can store it here and you can bring in here and uh, you can see the data okay got it cool uh, mainly implement while uh, dealing with big data uh, I didn't get the uh, question correctly Ajay Okay, we'll park this question at the end, okay? We'll, we'll j just discuss this, okay? This is what a QVD file. So now, when we go back to uh, refer this um, P, uh, presentation, see, I have, I have opened my QVD in my QVW, and again, I have a chance to uh, load my data, database or file data, into a QVD file. QVX also happens, because QVX, again, uh, gives uh, from the uh, ETL connector. Okay. Okay. We'll move on. Uh, this is a very uh, basic thing you need to understand. This is very important from the point of solution architect. When you do a solutioning, so uh, before being uh, designing, giving it to the developer, so you can just have this idea uh, very well in advance. So what is when when you know the business requirement happened uh, during business requirement phase itself in the project. So you try to understand what database, what files, and where is it, and what is the volume of data, and how frequent they want to, the scheduling and how many dashboards depend on this data all this you have to make a study in the requirement stage itself during requirement stage parallelly you start building this um, uh, how my script should happen and which table I have to put it in QVD which table I have to put it in QVW and what is my series uh, how to load the files all that you have to make all the uh, so when the BRD is uh, done means BRD is a uh, business requirement done then uh, your uh, high-level design document has to come up with these uh, figures okay yeah yeah um, this feature can be used while dealing with huge data yeah even uh, small data also we used to keep always QVD because we don't know uh, in the future uh, uh, some business when I'm doing a project uh, for the first two months I was having only about 500 MB data then um, uh, the data gets updated 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 the transaction data at the, um, the back end means at the data source they started pumping a lot of data then my QVD started becoming big 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 so that also happens so that is the reason you have to have a provision of keeping in QVDs then consume it in a part wise also you can divide the QVWs according to the business requirements so then it will be easier to maintain it even after one year after the usage of the project they will not get outdated okay Okay, I think I have shown you how to generally database access through OLEDB interface and for ODBC this you try it out with your desktop and uh, local database today or tomorrow also uh, so if you have any doubt we can clear it before the class starts tomorrow or even in the mid of the week also in somewhere if you have a lot of questions we can have a clarification also session okay so you can uh, um, connect with support okay which database to use is in click you defined through connect statement okay so when you do a connect I, I, I shown you already when I do a connect it goes to connect string it automatically brings in the user ID password and which server you are connecting all that see like this data source and connection specific item 
all that it automatically writes it you no need to have to uh, write each syntax on that connection okay okay see here uh, create a uh, i think now you can see whatever that i have shown you earlier on the actual uh, clickview document you can see here now create a new clickview document edit script see uh, i have uh, i have click uh, i have used uh, the script right on the icon so or else you can use control e also with a keyboard uh, savvy so with control e you can directly go to the script uh, uh, interface then uh, when connecting OLEDB, ODBC not present. So either either of the one you can connect. When you connect OLEDB, uh, this screen will come from the administration uh, of your OS. Say I, I suppose you are all using Windows. So in the Windows, you will have all these drivers uh, and you have to name them. And it is a common thing that any database you are connecting earlier, okay? You don't need to have to worry about it. It brings in the script, okay? So connecting to SQL Server, see after that, see if you have selected a OLEDB, then it goes to the connection, it gives the server name here, uh, gives an username password. This is the access credentials of that database, okay? Where uh, you have to make sure all the tables that you want in uh, what you want to use it for dashboard should be accessible by this username. Means they, they have to have an credentials, right? Uh, because uh, logical um, division will be there. Some users will be having some schema, uh, so you will not be uh, visible with some tables, some views of the database. That you have to make sure and uh, get that. And database name, then test the connection. So you will be able to see all the tables here, okay? So when you when you select the table, see automatically the click view writes SQL select star from test table. Unless uh, you want all the data, you, it is using automatically the select star. Okay. If you want a, uh, only a few columns, then you have to. If you are very savvy with SQL writing query, the same SQL query you can write here. These are the field names. Okay. So you can test it and you can uh, publish the data. Uh, and can we connect to new DB? Ajay has a question. A feature can be used while dealing with huge data. And can we connect a new DB like MongoDB? Um, MongoDB, I haven't uh, utilized it. But there are connectors, lot of connectors available nowadays. A ClickView is implementing every time. So you need to get an update document from the ClickView community. Then you can connect to them. MongoDB or now basically we have connected with Hayu. Hayu, uh, so that is the common thing we used to do. Uh, Hayu, then we are not even in some projects we are not connected directly with Hayu. So we have thrown from Hayu DB as a file. From file we are seeking. So there are a lot of turnarounds are there if a connector is not available. But there are uh, because big data is coming up like anything. All the tools they want to make it one universal. So they have to have a built-in connectors. So you can uh, use them. Okay. Okay. Mm, so when you when you click on that, see automatically it writes the syntax like this. You no need to write OLEDB connect to so and so, and uh, your uh, password everything will be there. If it is select star, all the four fields will be written here automatically from the database name DBO table. This is uh, the script will be written automatically. You no need to write that. Go to file. Then only you have to do is reload control R. When you reload the data, what happens? It connects to the database with this access and accesses the table name. What is this? DBO.table name. Okay, this table name and fetch the data, whatever the data as it is, because we are not given any uh, filter here. So all the data will become and stored here in QDB. Document ready with data, data set ready for reporting. Then we can go and get the data in reporting. Okay, here are the pictures. See, after this class, you can do an assignment with this, okay? Um, uh, so the video also available, uh, whatever that audio that we are speaking that will be recorded in the video. So you can follow that or else you can use the PowerPoint presentations on the learning material and you can start doing it on the on your desktop portion or on the personal thing. Or if you have a, a availability with the organization you can also start doing it sorry 
Okay, once data got loaded into dashboard, then it's time for report. Okay, this is again uh, the tab, the front end actually. See, I can show you if there is a data here. I can show you one list box. Uh, okay, and there are no tables here. Okay, I'll take a, a file here. It's very easy also. See, I have a table um, called as insurance, okay? I have my uh, training insurance data table. See, all these tables are here, some three, four tables. I'm storing it in QVD. This line is very important. This is we have to write, okay? So store data into, so local path I'm using. So you can use very well the relative path also. If I click on relative path, what happens? It is a general way, a generalized way, right? Writing the path. So when we move from one system to another system, it is not uh, looking necessarily on this path. It will be a server mode. So that you have to maintain with a relative path. Even use FTP also. Store map into dot QVD. See, I am writing here data dot QVD. So this file, insurance, uh, will be stored in the, uh, data.qvd okay so when i uh, okay reload happened already okay so think that i don't know whether file is there so i'm going here uh, thinking that reload is happened it has a data okay i think that's not here One second, I'll just uh, try it out. Because some files cannot be visible here. Okay. It takes some time. I think everybody can see the data. Okay, and I don't have the data here. Okay, I think uh, the data got, see all these fields can be imbibed here. I'll show you a little later, okay. Uh, uh, see. See, these are the things, uh, so I can, very well uh, create a uh, things here see i can select any any uh, tab, uh, field here these are the fields actually all the fields available here so you can make uh, uh, the table selection here what table you want so all that you can do all tables i, I want or only uh, sales rep master is available so only those fields will be made available here okay so those things you can write here and that field name and you can bring into the list box here, whatever that we have written here. Okay, see, I think if I about to find is, say dimensions, revenue versus budget. So these are the dimensions, fiscal month. So I have brought in the fiscal month here. I use the dimensions and uh, fiscal month is here. Expression, I have written some expression here, my current year, budget and budget amount. So this is all sort, style, what kind of thing. And uh, that's it. See, uh, my chart is coming here. See, all my month is here, my revenue is here. So, and uh, I have my, this blue color as a budget and I have my um, a light blue color as an actual also. So, these can be available in the dashboard at the front end when we see the, see, these are all the objects. So, which way you want? You want in a chart, you want in a table box, you want in a multi box all that you can bring in here, provided that table should have it here at the back end. You got it? This you have imported it. Okay. 
Okay, see here, I, I told you, right, table box. So when I, when I click on table box, it shows all the fields available in the uh, table. So show fields from table, master calendar. See, in calendar table, what all we will be having? Week, day, current year, all that we will be having. So that is visible here. So you make them visible here, and then you select only what you want. See, I, I can select only day, month, quarter, year. Okay, so day, month, quarter, year. So when I reload it, the text box will appear. See, all the data is here. Quarter is given, and month is Jan, and day, and year has come in. So this is what a simple uh, report, how the, this is a simple report. Anyway, we will see more and more expressions, how we write the expressions in the later classes. Okay. Mm. Okay, I have shown you. Uh, so what type of chart you can select? See, this is uh, what I have shown you, the menu. Okay. So when I click on the chart, there will be different type of charts will come here. When I click on here, uh, see, uh, if there is a chart, there will be a lot of charts available here. You can select histogram, you can select a line chart, combo chart, radar chart, gauge chart. You have shown you some example of it. Then uh, all that you can available, allow types, straight chart, block chart. You can see the name of that. And this is a funnel chart. And mainly, uh, the scatter charts are very important from the point of analytics. And this is also very important. And this pivot table, OK? So this is uh, uh, this is also important. This is also drill down and uh, drill through happens on these pivot tables and straight table. There are differences here. What is pivot table? I think you must be knowing as a business intelligence term. So these are the important charts we use it actually. These combo charts are very familiarly used. And for analytics uh, thing, for major visu uh, visualization, we use scatter charts and uh, mm, sparkling chart and there are some workarounds also we can use some workarounds to create some expressions and we can even I told you we can embed some Java API to make uh, some custom charts also so that is also there okay anyway we will see in the examples in the next classes And this is one of the histogram uh, which I went in. They collected, selected a chart. See the selection you can see here. This is my vertical bar graph here. And I have my uh, count here. And I have my quarter here. This is a count of day and this is my quarter. My dimensions are put in here. So how to create report? How to open, edit existing report, how to import, export report, what is fields, dimension, charts, objects, types of charts, and introduction. Uh, see, how to open and edit existing report is, uh, again, uh, you open the QEW, means uh, the click uh, working file, where it is already stored, so that you can open it and uh, existing report will be seen. Okay, so if you have published it using the publisher on the web, so you can very well uh, see that on the web. So uh, how to import export report is, I'll show you a few examples here. Mm. Uh, see here, uh, clear selections. Okay, I have selected 2011. Here is the fantastic feature. Whatever that you have selected is here, it is in green color. Whatever you have selected is uh, uh, gray color, okay? So you want to clear the selections, you can clear it. This is a butterfly chart, this is a very well uh, good chart. So you can uh, start uh, building them, okay? So um, one thing I will show you how to uh, export a chart here, okay? I'll just uh, give you, uh, these are the properties of any chart. Anyway, uh, you, when you go through uh, each individual assignment, you will come to know. I'll just show you one example here.
sorting, okay, all that you can do, the fine tuning of a graph, like a basic, uh, like customization on the painting, visual cues, coloring, okay, style, number, font, and then list box, default font, font also you can adjust for every uh, chart, allow move size, allow copy, size to data, okay, these are all conditionals. And then, okay, send to Excel or print, okay. See, if you click on here, so what happens here, I'm uh, using, uh, I have in the security uh, of the sheet, this is one called sheet. In the security, I went and I allowed the user to put this table. Usually, users will be wanted to see this data in an Excel and want to some play, right? So, one total, want some sorting, because they may not be uh, user savvy with a click view. So, then you can just click on the Excel. See, I have made arrangement to export onto an Excel. So, but you have to have a um, Microsoft Office, uh, then it goes and it, it, it uh, draws the data there, okay? I think it takes time. So, you can use that, okay? So, I'll show you in the next uh, classes. Yeah, I'll not, uh, so, that is a simple thing wherein we can go to. This is import-export, okay? Import is again done by um, QVD files also. So, uh, one QVW file, um, I have made it. Okay, so the same QVW file, I can import it in another QVW file. I think uh, you will get confused if I want to explain now. I'll just uh, take it into the next class, okay? So QVW file that you can import it and export to a, a report. Okay, what you have seen is here. See, this is a list box. Means it is a list of items will be published here. Very simple. Uh, see here, my Excel came in here. It's a late thing, right? See all the table there, whether it is a pivot table or a chart, all the data came into exported back here as it is. Of course, there are some um, cons here, like uh, some of the uh, formats which is not compatible with the Excel, you may not get it as it is, the color or something like. Most of it is okay. So when you say with the business uh, uh, users, you can say that also, because some of the format uh, depends on the Excel uh, handling. Okay, Ajay has a question. How to achieve the drill down, say, from chart, select any data set and corresponding details in the second chart? I have first chart as country, GDP. When I select India, I need different uh, state GDP. How can we see uh, only data as per the select example? When I select Karnataka, I need only Karnataka data. How to achieve the drill down, say, from chart one? Okay, select any data set and corresponding details in the second chart. Example, I have first chart as country, GDP. When I select India, I need different state GDP. Okay, how can we see only data as per the select example? When I select Karnataka, I need only Karnataka data. See, uh, this is uh, one kind of thing that you have to uh, do um, uh, the data modeling. So when you see the script and the data modeling, uh, so you have to allow which one have to be uh, detailed down and uh, which one will be uh, aggregated. That we can see in the while making the script there, okay? Yeah, so uh, this is a kind of uh, um, thing uh, that we have to uh, design the dashboard accordingly. So uh, the backend data we need to see first then we have to, we can do it, but that is uh, possible actually. So, uh, because uh, there is, uh, as I told you, country data and the GDP. GDP is a, again a fact. Uh, the state is again a dimension and country is again a dimension, right? So, they are, as long as they are associated in the backend tables, then you can uh, very well slice and dice in the dashboard, whatever you want, okay? using the filters. So as I told you, by customer, when you click on in the um, in filter in one da one dashboard in one chart, so only that by customer, the data was shown there. So like that, you can start using it. You try it out in the assignment sheet, okay? So we will come to know that when, when making the relational modeling there. Okay, we'll make that scroll bar here. Yeah, uh, and uh, because uh, the list box is having much data, there is a scroll bar will present here, then multi box, okay, 
then slider uh, there is a slider also available here so when you slide from 2001 data to 2006 you can see uh, the data also gets filtered okay then status bar uh, this is uh, I told you know this is a sheet actually and this is a button buttons also you can create like a Java APS you create now and under that what you want actually uh, so what kind of color you want to change on the report what kind of uh, uh, data you want to see you can write here uh, some exponent uh, um, uh, some filters also you can keep it at back of this event triggers like event triggers I think if you have a programming background you will come to know okay so then statistics box so this is what I told you, you know, standard deviation, uh, mean, um, all those things you can write. And this is a text object. And bar chart is here. So in a dashboard, you can give like this um, uh, uh, components, various components accordingly. Of course, um, this, uh, visual, this, this is a visualization uh, technique, how we want to place here and what color I have to use, what theme I have to use. You can very well design it. It has to have some uh, like uh, uh, customized uh, uh, knowledge. So how my visualization, you can have some uh, templates done and you can show it to business users. Then accordingly, you can do that. So then this is a standard toolbar wherein you can access all the um, icons here, uh, menu bar and design toolbar also will be here how to share and other things. I just, uh, uh, my I think if you have already installed, just go and uh, feel the hang of it. So this is the uh, undo layout also here. Clear selections, this is actually a button I have created. This is not a um, uh, one, one button I have created. So under that button, when I clear this, it has to go to a clear. There is an event written here, okay? All that is a similar. This is a slider actually. So minus 10 and accordingly the data will get distributed. What if cost? So if I have a what if ratio like 15%, 20%, these are really an analytics part that you can touch upon. See, uh, you can have a uh, uh, filter around here and month selection and so the calendar bar. So this placement is again depends on the visualization style, what the business user wanted it. And there are some more charts like I will show you uh, in the next class. Like if I write this ID where all this is associated, you can see in anywhere of the thing which is uh, highlighted as color. So that also you can very well see that and you can uh, create the um, association and uh, the business user can do a drill down chart, okay? Okay, mm, here it is a list of uh, sheet objects. Uh, so I have shown you in the click view, like when I right click it, so I have list boxes, statistics boxes, multi boxes, table boxes, uh, charts, uh, like pivot tables, straight tables, and input boxes, uh, slider objects, I shown you now and then current selection box see what all I have selected so that also I can keep in the box and they will be get selected here we'll see more examples bookmark objects why the bookmark objects then what is the button so I told you there is a, a behind there is an event written then text objects then line arrow objects also available behind that line arrow you can you can put some events also as a, a Java program okay Okay, we'll move on to the uh, next uh, properties. See, I have shown you. Um, so when I see list box, so it is not only uh, list box, uh, of course, uh, when we have the list box, list box wizard will have eight tabs. Okay, like this general expression, sort, presentation number, font, layout, caption. As the name itself uh, specifies, caption means you want to change the caption of the chart. So use this. You want to make a layout changes like x axis, y axis, and what is all about. So, and you want to change the font of the chart. You want to change the numbering, like number system, formatting. Like, I want two decimals, I want three decimals. All that you can uh, go through with this number and presentation, what my presentation should be. So, how the, uh, mm, uh, uh, the color should happen, and uh, where all uh, uh, this sorting will come here in the sort 
and expressions so uh, because uh, everything will go on expressions also it is not only straight drawn uh, fields sometimes we need to write a expression like sum of revenue so I want to aggregate the all the revenue per year or I want to show only the latest year like 2015 so you can very well do an expression so that is called user interface UI script so that you have to write it uh, so that we will see in the next classes okay UI script so all that will happen in the expression and in the general layout as usual see show alternatives hide excluded read only override print settings um, so you can very well uh, start doing research on this it's not a problem okay the straightforward uh, things give title to the list box object ID system generated and there will be object IDs will be there script and general expression sort presentation number font layout and caption okay uh, see I told you the expression tab right in the expression tab I'm writing uh, some of shipping cost shipping cost is directly a derived field name uh, might be it is a direct uh, field name from the database or I have created inside my ETL layer we will call it as ETL script or uh, the backend script inside ClickView okay so they which is already available shipping cost is one field name so I'm making a summation of it and that table so uh, the aggregation is figured here and writing here and add so that will be enabled here formulas for analyzing the data so that is where the expression holds good here and see here if I use this paste what happens uh, this selected uh, uh, table you no need to type in here because there will be a syntax error happens right manual typing and other things so you can paste it so it will automatically comes and prints here so that you can uh, do it okay very well okay mm. sort tab I'll just go to the click view document see this is one table right so you can't see actually so how this table is uh, done right with which is not having but this is some visualization design <coughs> So if I go here, the properties select here, properties, so I will see all the eight tabs here. So when I go here, I want to sort my order. Okay, this is my order, order column, sort, how they have sorted ascending. So when I remove this selection, it goes to the ascending. I'll show you. See, there will be an ascending class will be there. So I have made it as a manually, the ascending sort and I can do text ascending also uh, by making here text click uh, so they will be presented here A to Z or Z to A load order so all that will come to know then frequency descending ascending then expression so you can write expression also if that comes in here you show it as a first one you can write expression for that also and you can uh, demote also so how you want to ex express in the table okay so you can do that and in the presentation say show column hide column so you can hide a column this order ID I don't want so you can hide it allow drag and drop I told you drag and drop vertical column labels uh, a wrap so this is about once the text name is uh, too much so you can wrap the cell text like a notepad and word how you do it okay and then this is uh, uh, justified left center left justified uh, center justified right justified so all those things you can uh, very well use here this is all about presentation visual cues visual cues means uh, you can put in like uh, uh, see I told you like uh, a traffic signal right uh, see my upper limit so my revenue goes beyond 100 show it as red so you can very well uh, click on here text and it will go to you can select any colors here or you can use your custom colors also with RG, RGB uh, formula also okay because uh, to make it a generalized uh, thing and you can uh, do a one color gradient so this is all again your visualization uh, tax how you do it okay the developer has to know all this calculated uh, means RGB color calculated so those things and whether it should be a bold italic underline then background color should be what color all that colors are available here okay so this is visual scale and then style so um, 
cell background color transparency. So this is all about again uh, UI concepts. So if you have, know any interface like so any programming uh, reports like Java and APIs, any any other BI tool, it is the same like. So you can use uh, color transparency, um, background, light, all that. And this is the number fixed to how many decimals. So I want my sales quantity uh, should not have any decimal. So zero. So or I want to have my uh, dis uh, uh, precision. Okay, preview. So there is a preview option also available. And system generated. You can just very well play around and the decimals for thousand separators and how the decimal should be. In some countries, uh, decimals are represented as comma. I think in some of the European countries. So you can very well change it. Uh, so those things. And then separators will be uh, by a dot. So these are the things that you can add million symbol, billion symbol to represent all the data at the formatting level. And then font. So this is uh, again a mess of his thing. So what all fonts you can just use it and you can standardize it. And this is a layout, border width, shadow intensity and show. Allow move size. See this table can be moved here, moved here uh, by the business user. So if I if I click on here, this table can be moved here. Allow copy. Uh, I can copy and clone it. So all that you can give it. So it, it is again depends on it. See, I, I can move now. See, I can clone, and there is one more copy sheet. One more table came in here. So you want to dice and dice and that, so you can see here, right? And you can do all your wonders there. When you give it to business user, business user also start to can play around like an Excel sheet. So this is all you can give them uh, the uh, uh, security, detach. So you don't want this and fit columns to data, sort, export, send to Excel. Again, on the right click also, it will be available. Copy to clipboard, full table. So you can copy uh, clipboard. It takes some time because huge data is there. And you can paste it here, clone. It is the same as clone, okay? Okay, I think uh, you are very well, uh, but you have to play around these properties. They are all there. Each uh, object has a uh, properties. You have to just uh, put some value and try it out. Put some value, try it out. So you will be um, uh, coming to know, you will be familiarizing with all the properties. It is only by doing hands-on you will come to know, okay? And then sheet object properties. See, this is caption. See, I told you uh, there is a caption, account uh, country. I am writing a caption to the list box. More uh, flexibility, represent meaningful and multitask. So here you can write a, a font, you can write a caption, and you can make a background color, text color for this. And active also. Uh, see, this is by event driven. When I click on that uh, table, the caption will be having background color will be changed. So that you can do it here, active uh, caption, okay? Active and inactive. So text color should change and background color should change. This is on the event based. And then uh, here, uh, special icons, uh, see like menu, um, part, copy data, all that you can give the first, uh, you have to give all the permissions here, what uh, the user wants to do. Then only he can be able to, he or she can be able to do that at the front end. So this is what how the um, structure goes on, okay? 